How do you design a CMOS NAND logic circuit? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju, and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community, where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask ourselves that obvious question. How do you design a CMOS NAND logic circuit? Well, let's run out. So, we know for a fact that every CMOS logic circuit has got two parts. So here, first we would have the VDD over here and this VDD is connected to a bunch of transistors over here which together is called the pull-up network. And this pull-up network is made up of PMOS transistors. And this now is connected to another set of transistors over here which are referred to as the pull down network and this pull down network consists of n mass transistors and now this in turn is connected to the ground and here this is where we take the output so this is how a particular cmos logic circuit has to be designed so now we know for a fact that in the case of a dot operation we have seen that in the case of dot operation all the pmos transistors must be in parallel, whereas all the NMOS transistors must be in series. So this is what we know in the case of a dot operation. So NAND operation is nothing but A dot B, the whole complement. This is NAND operation. So here, at the output, we must get the output is equal to A dot B, the whole complement. So here, NAND gate is represented like this. This is the NAND gate, like this. So here, if we draw the truth table, if this is A, if this is B, and this is the output C, then here we would get A, B, C. So now if the inputs are say 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, like this. Here first, here we would get 0, NAND 0, that is 0 into 0 which is 0, the complement of 0 into 0 is 1. Similarly, 0 into 1 is 0, complement is 1. 1 into 0 is 0, complement is 1. But 1 into 1 is 1, complement is 0. So this is the output that we have to get over here. So now, let us now construct the CMOS logic circuit. So first, we have the VDD over here. So now, we know that for dot operation, the PMOS transistors must be in parallel. That is, whatever transistors that are there inside this particular pull-up network must be in parallel. So here, we would have two parallel PMOS transistors like this. And here, we would give the input A, and here, we would give the input B. So now here, we have two parallel PMOS transistors. Very simple, guys. Now, next, we have another network of transistors which are referred to as a pull-down network. So, inside the pull-down network, we have NMOS transistors. But here, for dot operation, these NMOS transistors must be in series. So, here, we have two NMOS transistors that have series in each other. So, here, we give input A and here, we give input B. And this is then grounded. So now here we take the output over here like this and this output is simply but A dot B the whole complement. This is because we've seen that whatever output that comes out from here is the complement. So if we rather need A dot B, we should just pass this through an inverter from which we would get A dot B. But here, since we have to get A dot B complement itself, we can just take the output over here and thus we would get A dot B complement. Here, this is the source, this is the drain, and this is the gate. But here, this is the drain, this is the gate, and this is the source. Again, this is the drain, this is the gate, and this is the source. So now, let us see how this particular circuit works. So, let us take these particular transistors as a Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Let us now see the working of this particular logic circuit. So now, let us see the working of this particular logic circuit. So now here, we have four input cases just like we have seen here. That is, we have A and B as 0, 0, or we have A and B as 0, 1. We have A and B as 1, 0, or A and B can be 1, 1. So now, let us see the case when both A and B are 0. 
So now here, when A and B are 0, here it is 0 and here it is 0. But in the case of P MOS transistors, when a 0 is given as the input, it becomes on. That is, some kind of a current flows over here. This becomes on. But in the case of N MOS transistors, when we give a 0 over here, this becomes off or it becomes open circuited. So therefore, this acts like nothing flows over here. So whatever VDD we are getting, that flows like this and it goes out to the output and therefore we get an output 1. Here Q1 and Q2 are on, whereas Q3 and Q4 are off. Very simple guys, very simple. Next let us see the case when A is 0 and B is 1. So here A is 0, so this being a PMOS transistor, this would be on. But when B is 1, this would become off. But here, this is on and this is off. Okay, so now the current can flow like this. Whatever voltage is given here, it can flow like this. And it can be obtained at the output over here. And now here, we have A is 0 and B is equal to 1. So because this is 0, this would be off. So it gets, this particular circuit gets cut off from here itself. So therefore, whatever comes like this, we get it at the output over here. Therefore, getting an output 1. Here, Q1 is on, Q2 is off. Q3 is off, but Q4 is on. But this doesn't matter because since this Q3 is off, from here itself, nothing is going down. Next, let us see the case when A is 1 and B is 0. So, when A is 1 and B is 0, this being 1, we know that in the case of a PMOS transistor, when 1 is given as input, this becomes off. This is now off, but this is on. Because here we have B is equal to 0. So when this is 0, this is on. So therefore some kind of voltage flows like this and we get it over here. But here in the case of NMOS transistor, here since A is 1, this is on. But now since B is 0, this is off. So the circuit gets cut over here. So therefore whatever comes over here would go over here like this. Therefore, we would get an output 1 again. Here, this Q1 is off, Q2 is on. This Q3 is on and Q4 is off. Now, finally, let us see this case when both A and B are 1. So, when both A and B are 1, here A is 1 and B is 1. But when 1 is given as input to a PMOS transistor, this particular transistor becomes off. That is, no current flows through this particular transistor. So therefore, this becomes open circuited. But now here, here what we observe is that A and B, when this A is 1 and B is 1, here in the case of NMOS transistors, when 1 is given as input, it becomes on. Whereas in the case over here as well, it becomes on. But it doesn't matter. The reason being, here itself, these two are off. So therefore, whatever comes over here, it gets cut off over here, it doesn't even go towards the bottom. So therefore, we get an output 0. Because whatever is coming here, nothing is going over here. Because effectively, the circuit gets over here itself. Because these two transistors are off. So here, Q1 and Q2 are off, whereas Q3 and Q4 are on. So this thus is a simple working principle of a CMOS NAND logic circuit. As simple as that, guys, as simple as that. So this is simply what you refer to as a CMOS NAND logic circuit. As simple as that, guys. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a CMOS NAND logic circuit. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.